So, Jerry, first of all, 40 years in the radio business. Congratulations. That's Thank you. quite a milestone. Um, for our viewers, talk about uh, how you kind of got into the business, I guess. Um, you know, it was it's something that I always wanted to do. I really can't really explain why, I guess, although radio has always been a big part of my life, whether it be local radio or uh, in the evenings listening to stations from, you know, out of the area. But um, it's just something that really was uh, of interest to me. Um, didn't know how I was ever going to get involved in the business. There were some schools around, but they were so far away that it just didn't really seem possible. So I took a job after high school and was involved with that and just happened to hear one day an ad on KUKU for some part-time help. So went and applied. Back in those days, it was everything was rip and read, your news and everything. So that was one of the big parts of the interview was to rip and read news. And so I had actually practiced, um, had done that. So I was feeling pretty comfortable and so went in and applied. And a few days later, got the word that they wanted me to check in. And so started part time and as it happens to be in the radio business, they, people move around quite frequently, and so I was full-time fairly quickly, and it just kind of started from there, and back in 1977. What was your first official day? What day was that? The first, yeah, it's very interesting because I, honestly, I don't know. That's interesting. It was middle latter part of the month the one thing i do remember was it was very soon like within the week of after elvis had died because he died in 1977 that year and they'd had a big um program on air because it was a big shock to everybody a lot of elvis fans and they'd done a special program so i remember it was about a week or so after that that i came along and, and started so but it was in the month of august but Typical me, I'm not very good with keeping up with um, little things like that, I guess. So, Elvis, Elvis's death, I mean, 40 years, that's a lot of history. It's been a busy 40 years. I mean, you had, like you said, Elvis, 9-11, um, obviously, you've been here for that. Um, what were some of the other big things that stood out to you? Yeah, 9-11 certainly was, and I was at KWPM during that period of time, and I do remember that was a, a big day. The, uh, the Space Shuttle Challenger, the day that it blew up, um, we, again, were still getting our news pretty much by teletype back then, although we did have a TV in the studio, and we were able to watch some of that, and it was something John Lennon... That was something that came along from the music side of things, but I, I would imagine in those 40 years, probably 911 and the the Oklahoma City bombing was, you know, something that that really sticks out news-wise. But those were events. Unfortunately, they were all tragedies. There were some, you know, good things that happened too, but uh, those things really stick out in my mind. Or some of the good things, some of your favorite moments from your your storied career. <laughs> well, you was able to visit with a lot of people. Uh, you know, we over the years, the big part to me has been just the people that I've been able to meet, and some of them were, you know, performers and had a chance to to visit with um, some of the country music people over the years. The we had the uh, RCT Ranch she used to have the big Republican rally every year, and Claude Treeman would bring in uh, a lot of country music performers, got a chance to interview uh, the likes of Ray Stevens and people like that that, that came in to perform, and those were all things that, that, um, that come to mind. And um, local people, there have been some local uh, folks that are, are no longer with us that, uh, that stick out in my mind that, you know, a bucket list thing that to me that never happened that I always wanted to do was to interview Porter Wagner. Um, that was that would have been something that would have been really uh, special. But um, there's just been so many things uh, that 
you know, one over the other, I guess, doesn't really stick out. But uh, there's just been a lot of great days with, with local people. Uh, the people that I've worked with, I, I guess, stand out probably. And, and there's, unfortunately, some of those that are no longer with us, too. Uh, one of my favorite things, <clears throat> and you have to be, you have to have, like, radar, sonar hearing for it, is you're in winter's bone for, like, six seconds. <laughs> yeah. That, that was an interesting situation. I had gotten a call from uh, Meredith Cisco, who asked me if I would be interested in doing a, a little bit for this movie, which nobody really had heard of or knew much about, or any of the people that were even that were going to be in it. I don't think even at the time we knew who was going to be in it. And so it kind of went along for a while, and then one day she called me and wanted to know if we could record this little segment and so that was that little piece was actually recorded in a bedroom at my house um, one evening uh, and was just kind of ad lib she just wanted you know what a typical small town radio station a little bit about the weather maybe a community calendar item or something and yeah you're right it's <laughs> you have to really listen for it but but I was uh, you know, really proud of it. I, I wish that I would have gotten to meet a few more people involved with the, the actual movie. That, you know, is something that, that would have been really neat. And because uh, it, of course, went on. And when it started getting some award nominations, it was like, wow. Um, even though my part was pretty small, it, it, yeah, I'm, I'm, you know, that, that really does um, stick out. And, and, uh, but I was shocked at the number of people that actually picked up on it, even though, like you say, you really have to listen for it. With, with that being said, you said a hometown radio and kind of doing the hometown radio thing. You know, I came from a big city. You've been around here for this region for most of your life. You know, to me, you are the embodiment of that local person because everybody knows you. Everybody loves you. Everybody trusts you. I know everybody in this building does. Um, how how does that make you feel, knowing that over forty years you've kind of garnered this this trust with the public and this rapport with them? It's it's it is a good feeling. I mean, it it does make me proud because that. I mean, when I first started, obviously most everybody when they get in the business, you know, you have got all these dreams. You wanted to go here, there. My big dream was to go to WLS in Chicago because that's what I listened to nighttime, you know, almost every night. And those were some of the people that that really got me excited. I thought, what a great job that would be, you know, working, I, especially at nights. I thought that would be so cool, you know, work nights, didn't have to get up early, which is interesting because <laughs> it's come for a full circle there. But, um, but you know, as time went by, I, I really loved the Ozarks, and this is where I was born and raised. And... I always tell everybody that um, you know I, I made the full circle in Allen County. I'm from Mountain View, uh, went to Willow Springs, and wound up in West Plains. So that's kind of been my full circle in, in radio. But but yeah, it's it, it is um, something that I guess just from the longevity side of it, uh, because I and I'm, being in this network, we've been in, able to be on several different stations. So that that helps and people. Um, recognize you know your voice or who you may be or, or whatever but um, but but to have that the trust is is the big thing because that's a big part of radio whether it's um, just your on-air show or doing weather or whatever it's that's a real big part of it so 40 years you got 40 more left in you <laughs> you know I, I plan to kind of go as as long as as I possibly can and I certainly still enjoy it. Um, you know, there's there's an old song, Bill Anderson's country DJ song, where he says, makes I'm just, you know, it's not the exact line, but, you know, he says he still gets a thrill about opening the mic up and, you know, saying good morning out there in radio land. And that really does kind of sum it up. Um, because in the in the 40 years, that, that's, that song talks a lot about, you know, at the time when I first started, that was the way it was. You, you answered all the phones, uh, uh, you mowed the yard and took out the trash, and you signed on, signed off, because many stations, as we were back in those days, were 
we went off at sunset. So um, sometimes, uh, you know, you, you had an early, I mean, I at one point in time, we signed off at 4.45 in the afternoon. So your afternoon shift was, was pretty limited. And that was another cool thing about when I first started, we played uh, country music in the morning. We had an hour of gospel. We had kind of what at the time was adult contemporary. And then at 3.30, because that kind of coincided with the uh, school getting out, we had Top 40, which we called Rock 40 at that time. And uh, so I, I really had an indoctrination. I was more familiar with the Rock 40 side than anything else. But So it, it gave me a chance to learn some country music, which I knew some of it. And But I, you know, I enjoy all kinds of music and the gospel. And uh, I guess that and the fact that when I first started, everybody had a shift and you depended on that next person to follow you up because there was no automation and that sort of thing. And so there were some interesting stories there over time because you knew if that person didn't follow you up, you were there for another six hours. And then if that person didn't show up, you, <laughs> you were there for another shift. But, um, but there, there have been some real good times and I hope to, you know, carry it on as, as long as I can. And as long as, you know, the, Ozark Radio Network and the Marhefka family will have me. Oh, you were talking about automation and technology. I mean, back in back when you started, I'm sure you had reel to reel and you had the big old portable recorders. Sure. I'm recording this interview right now on a tripod <laughs> video camera that is tethered to my phone, mm -hmm. where I can zoom in and out at will. Mm -hmm. With the technology change, what are your kind of thoughts on that with the business and, and whatnot? You know, it's 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 good and bad. Um, you know, I. At first, the the automation side of it, where you could walk away from it, was was not only scary, but it um, I didn't like that at first, really, honestly. After coming from where I did, although it's certainly got its advantages, and you know, when I first started, we did um, everything was on vinyl, pretty much, you know, music-wise. So you had to have records queued up, and ready to go. So that that was different, and our. Um, our commercials were on carts, and so you had to play them manually through the cart machine. And uh, then when I came to KWPM, the FM side was all automated, and we had big old reel to reels. And they would, you know, one would start. And they were like, I don't remember how many of them, four or five. And then, then uh, if you hear that noise, that beep 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 thing, meant one of the reels had run out of music, and you had to rewind it and put another reel on. And so <laughs> you had to have somebody here all the time to pretty much take care of that. But um, yeah, the technology side, you know, it's like anything else, it's, it's good and, um, and, and sad sometimes too because of, there aren't as many people probably as you can get by with fewer people. Um, but, uh, you know, there, there are certainly some advantages and, you know, technology like this is tremendous. I, I was looking through some old pictures the other day, newspaper pictures. Uh, one was I was standing out in the field, it was an agriculture story. I got this huge cassette recorder that I was carrying around that I had to strap over my shoulder because it was so big. And um, but that was boy at the time I remember that was top of the line, you know, thing to have on your news rounds. Right, anything else you wanted to add before we wrap up? I just no, I just you know I want to thank everybody. Uh, they had a lot of kind people that have said a lot of nice things and. Thank the Marhefkas. I, I told Sean the other day. I, I think I've worked with pretty much everyone in her in her family through the years. So that was uh, you know that's kind of a, a great feeling, and they they've been really great to me. And Papa Bob was a you know great mentor, and I I was lucky to be around him and hear some of his thoughts. And he was so always so forward thinking, and also got a chance to drive some of his real cool cars that he had. <laughs> he had a pretty good collection of vehicles, but. No, Ed, I, I just, you know, want to thank everybody that I work with now and, and certainly those in the past. I, I've worked with so many fun, great people and I've reconnected with some of them in person and now with social media, Facebook and things, I've, you know, reconnected with a few others and uh, so I just you know, want to thank them and, and my family. They put up with a lot over the years uh, with things that have gone on and as you well know, uh, this business is... Uh, get up and go and you know uh, that sometimes interferes with personal things and I know with my daughters in particular I've missed some things that, that I'm you know it's sad to to miss them but there were things that were going on that that involved uh, the necessity of uh, being at work so but just a just a big thank you and uh, I hope folks will put up with me for some time to come <laughs>